Hi everybody, this is part two of the Unwrap UVW tutorial uh, here in 3ds Max. This is actually, believe it or not, the third time that I've re-recorded this, uh, but it will be the second time that I have uploaded it. I wasn't happy with the audio in the original, uh, so I'm starting from scratch here and we'll pick up right where we left off. So, I'm going to go ahead and select the head and you can see that we have the Unwrap UVW modifier applied. If I come in here and I open up the sub-object menu, if I come in here and I click on sub-object face, obviously that's going to put me into sub-object mode. Uh, but I should also mention that you can do the same thing down here in the selection area. I can click on vertices, I can click on edges, etc. But in this case, we want to work with polygons. So the first thing that I'm going to do if I want to peel the UVs off of this guy and lay them out flat is I'm going to come over here under my peel menu and I'm going to come down here and click on this edit seams button and what the edit seams button will let me do is it will let me come in here and click on edges in my model and you see that they turn blue as I click on them and what I'm actually doing is I'm essentially making a cut in the UVs on the surface of my model and if you can imagine if I start here at the forehead and cut all the way back here to the base of the neck. This is going to give me a point at which I can I, I can grab those UVs and peel them off of the surface of the model so that I can begin to lay them out flat. Now that's the slow way to do it. And by the way, if you want to deselect any of these guys, if you accidentally click on one that you don't want, simply hold down Alt and click again and you can deselect that particular part of the seam. So I'm going to come in here and get rid of that seam and show you a faster way to do that. I'm going to come over here to, again, my peel controls. And I'm going to go right over here to point-to-point -point seams. And I'm going to start by clicking right here at sort of the hairline for my character. And then if I rotate up to the top of the head and I come back here to the, to the very back of the skull. And again, I'm staying along that same edge loop. You'll notice I've got this little rubber band attached to my um, cursor. I'm going to go ahead and click right here and you can see that it's going to draw that seam for me automatically along that edge loop. And then I'm going to click one more time here at the base of the neck right around where that seventh cervical vertebrae would be. And now I have the point where I can begin to peel the UVs away from the model. But how do I do that? Well the next step is to first make sure that we are no longer in point-to-point -point mode. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click. You see that button is no longer lit. And once again, make sure that you're in face mode here, or make sure that you have polygon selected here under the selection menu. Just come out here and click on any polygon, any quad in your head, assuming that your model is set up like mine. doesn't matter which one. Then I'm going to come back over here into the peel menu, and there's this little button in here that says expand face selection to seams. I'm going to click on that. And granted, I could have, if I wanted to, I could have walled off a part of this model and just unwrapped a piece of it. But since we want to actually unwrap the whole head in one go, it's just going to grab the entire thing because we haven't really put a seam anywhere that's going to block any of the polygons. And by the way, we didn't draw a point-to-point -point seam around the opening here at the neck but it's not necessary. The, the program will just assume because that's open. That's why we capped the eyes and the mouth so that it wouldn't make that assumption about that part of the model. But I do want to make sure that I mention that the reason that this will work is because the seam that's created by that opening is actually connected to the seam that's going to split the back of the head. All right, so once we have all these guys selected, the next step is to actually apply the pelt map but I'm going to go ahead and make an edit point in the video. So in oh, there'll be about a one second jump here and then we'll start talking about pelt mapping. Okay, so we have our faces selected. The next step is to come over here once again into this peel menu and you'll see a little button here that looks like an animal pelt on a stretcher. That's the pelt map button. Go ahead and click that button. And what's going to happen 
is there will be two menus that open. One should be familiar by now. It's the Edit UVWs window. And the other is our Pelt Map window. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and position these over the actual model for now, since we want to be focusing on these two guys and not the model. We're just concerned with the UVs at the moment. And you can see that all of the damage that I did to this map, or to these UVs in the previous uh, tutorial video, have been completely undone. And I'm essentially looking at a, a flattened version of the entire model projected from a front view. Well, over here in my Pelt Map window, I'm going to come down here under Pelt Map Pelt Options, and there's a button in here called Select Stretcher. And what that'll do is this circular ring of vertices out here, um, this is actually the stretcher. I'm going to come up here in my Edit UVW controls, and I'm going to come over here and switch to Scale Selected Subobject. And since I have the entire thing selected, I can mouse over an individual vertex, left click and drag, and I'm going to scale up the stretcher a bit. Now, in my mind, what this does is it gives the, it gives the polygon somewhere to go by scaling the stretcher. If you put me on the spot and said, is it absolutely necessary to scale the stretcher, I would not have a good answer for you. It's just something that I've always done. So. Full disclosure, that just might be uh, my little bad habit that I've developed, but I get good results with it, so if it ain't, if it ain't broken, I'm not going to fix it. So once I've scaled up the stretcher a bit, I'm actually going to start running the pelt simulation. So I'm going to come up here under Quick Pelt, and I'm just going to click the Start Pelt button, and watch what happens. It's actually stretching out that cage, and now I'm going to click Stop Pelt, to stop that process. And now we have a very surprised looking flattened out version of my model. Well, it's not actually the model, it's the model's UVs. But we're still not done because we've, we've done the initial step, we've stretched it out, and you can see that it's peeled it along that seam that I drew along the back of the head, which is convenient. Once you're done with the pelt map, you have to actually come over here into the pelt map window and hit commit. And once that's been committed, the next step is we actually want to come down here to Arrange Elements. And I could do this after the fact, but just for the sake of the educational value of the tutorial, I'll, I'll keep reminding you to do this. Under Arrange Elements, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to tell it that I want it to pack those uh, UVs into that one-to-one -one texture space. And you can see that when it does that, it actually flips it upside down. So in order to fix that, up here under Quick Transform, there are two buttons down here that let you rotate 90 degrees around a pivot, either clockwise or counterclockwise. Doesn't matter which one you use. If it flips your UVs upside down, just click that button twice, come back over here to move, and I'm just going to fish him around a little bit to try to position him in here again. And again, this might just be my own thing, but I'm also going to come in here and scale this map down just a little bit so that it definitely fits within my one-to-one -one space. All right, now, how can we tell if that actually worked? How can we tell if the UVs, as they've now been flattened, are applying to the head without any sort of distortion? Well, we have to apply some sort of a map with consistent structures on it. The nice thing is, if I come over here and I click up in this little corner roll down here, and I click on Checker Pattern, the Edit UVW window will project that UV map onto our head. And as you can see, nothing's really very consistent at the moment. All of those squares are different sizes, they're stretched, they're distorted, they're pinched in some areas. So the next step of this tutorial is where we will actually talk about, well, okay, now that we've actually got this thing unwrapped, how do we get it to be more uniform and fit the actual model? Okay, so let's talk about relaxing these UVs. The next step for us is to come in here and select 
all of the faces, all of the UVs. Then I'm going to come up here to the Tools menu inside of the Edit UVWs window. And right down here, second to the bottom, is my Relax button. Now again, the settings that I use for this uh, mainly just came from trial and error. I sort of learned all of this software on the job as I went along, as I needed it. So a lot of the stuff that I do is just the stuff that worked when I was under a deadline. So if there is a better configuration or a better setup for this and you know of it, please let me know in the comments area. I'm always, I'm always happy to hear from people. So where it says relax by edge angles, instead of using that, what I use is relax by face angles. I leave the iterations at 100, but I turn the amount all the way up to 1. And I don't touch the stretch value at all. Everything else I leave at default. And what I'm going to do is I'll zoom in a little bit here so you can see specifically what's going to happen to the face. I'm going to go ahead and hit Start Relax. And then Stop when it starts to distort. Now you can see here that I've got some issues down here along the chin and some overlap here around the eyes and the nose. And that's actually a good thing because in the next part of the video it will give me something to sort of fix and show you how that you can how you can go through and fine tune your unwrap because it almost never goes perfectly the first time. So if I'm not happy with that I can hit control Z and I can experiment. I can try turning my amount down to say 0.5 and then starting my relax again and stopping it earlier. The point is that there isn't one magic bullet for this, that it's trial and error, it's experimentation. Sometimes you'll get good results right off the bat, sometimes it's a struggle. The point is just keep pressing buttons, keep fiddling around with things, and you can see that we've gotten some good results here, because if I hit Control Z and I go back to what it was before, keep your eye right here on the model itself, if I hit Control Z, you can see that we went from being really stretched and really distorted to Something that's a little bit more uniform, but still isn't ideal. Okay, so a big part of the unwrap process is just working in iterations. So in the actual next video, in part three, we're going to talk about how you go in and fine tune your UVs to get it to the point where it's not perfect, but close enough that uh, the casual viewer probably won't notice 